What's going on, everybody? I'm Trayvon Miles alongside Jeff Harris and Jonah Restuccio. And welcome into the Delmarva Sports Insider. Guys, even though the snow has shut down most of the area, yeah. we still are the show giving you all in-depth analysis to all local sports here on the shore. That's right. We've got a lot to get into tonight, so let's get into it. Bayside basketball is back. It's wow. back. With two games this past week, looking to start 2-0 for the first time since the 2014 season. And still to come, so much basketball, but can't forget about the wrestling season. We recap Mardella and Steven Decatur in just a bit. And we can't forget about SU down the, the road, Harvard both the, the men and women in action at home. Earlier this week against Marymount, we have those highlights coming up in just a bit. That's right. Welcome to the show, folks. We've got so much basketball to get into. Yes. Of course, along with wrestling and college basketball, we'll open the night where we had opening night in Berlin on Tuesday, the two-time defending champions of the Bayside, Stephen Decatur Boys They're Basketball, putting good. their 27-game home win streak on the line, hosting one of the Bayside North's best teams in North Carolina. Maybe this was an early Bayside title preview game. I don't know. One thing I do know, Decatur tough to beat anywhere, especially at home. Off the opening tip, Kevon Bowles yeah, gets that it was fast. and puts it in. Fastest two points ever start a season, I would say. <laughs> Then number one, showing off the crossover game, going to get past his man, going to find Gabe Aluma underneath. He eventually puts it in. 17-point lead at the half for the Seahawks. North Carolina trying to get back into it. Their guy, Joey Adams, with a nice behind ooh, the back ooh, pass nice. to Jamie and nice Franklin. Move. He gets the layup to go. Jamie. But Decatur just too much, namely Boyles. Look, once this guy gets it's into the skills. lane, guy, just it is just undersized. over. No look pass there to Zion Shockley for two more. Decatur takes that home win streak to 28 games with a 68-51 to 51 win. The jury's still out on this team, but they showed me some things tonight. Defensive, we were really good. I was very impressed. We just got to sharpen up on our offense, but that's going to come. Uh, I just thought the guys for their you know, first home game, uh, that's 27 straight, and uh, that's all I had to say. They don't want to be the first team to lose in this gym. I love B.J. Johnson's tie there, basketball. Oh, yeah. But down in Mardella Tuesday night, the Warriors getting the Matthew May era started, hosting Chris Field, and they came out looking good. Jaron Smith okay, gets Jay. the outlet pass and lays one in for two. Now, Chris Field has two studs they're going to lean on this year. One oh, is yeah. Trey John Sterling, who hits Justin Cohen coming down the lane, who scores with a nice layup. Mardella not backing down, though. Ryan Waters spotting Knocked up from down. three and knocking it down. Mardella played now, tough. When man. it was all said and done, though, guys, Chris Field just too much. Check out this dump inside to Sterling, who puts it in, plus the foul. Chris Field, check out this score, goes on to win it big, 80-50. to 50. And one of the best student sections in the Bayside is not here tonight as we got Washington and Bennett and early on for Washington. Great transition. And then a few plays later, the spot up knocked down three by Josh Roll. Eye holes in Washington. They caught a 15 point deficit to just six. But Bennett, they would get back into it with defense. Amir Thomas gets the steal and he's headed the other way for two. And then my man Montez <laughs> Jefferson doing the Montez. same. Bennett would actually begin there we to go, run Montez. some clock efficiently moving around. Finally getting it down to their big man, Harold Morton. He finishes it strong inside the paint. Bennett there, and they impressed us, closing this game out down the stretch with a 78-66 nice to 66 win. And now we have the Parkside matchup. Is. The best the student, student section. section in the Bayside. They say camo night. <laughs> Parkside taking on Snow Hill. And Parkside led for most of this game. Jay Ayers would get two right there. Then a little bit later, Drew Housen, the three-point specialist, knocking one down from the corner for the Eagles at Parkside. This team is as athletic as advertised. That young man, you'll hear a lot. Marcus Sharns gets two points right there. And then Parkside doing what they do, Getting out running the fast break. Exactly. Kenny Burke going to pass it up to Tyrese Purnell, and he's laying in two. How about it? Parkside with a big 63-57 to 57 home win. Can't forget about the Salisbury Christian boys who are on the road for their fourth game in five days, taking on Delmarva Christian Tuesday night. Early in the first, Wyatt Kwiatkowski, quite the last name, finds his brother Anthony Kwiatkowski in the corner who knocks down the early three. Then still in the first, the purple and white getting out oh, in transition. No Late in the Big rush man. with a fancy no-look pass to Big Seth man. Stevens for the lay-in. Delmarva would lead 17-9 after one, but Salisbury not going away. Ben Johnson with the easy jumper. The Jags cutting the lead to just five right before halftime. 
And in the second half, Jags still fighting. Christian Marshall providing a spark off the bench. He hits the elbow fadeaway. Count the bucket plus the foul. The Jags beginning to knock a little bit, but Kwiatkowski would put it away with the fancy no-look pass to Chris Van Hoof. Delmarva Christian rolls in this one, guys, 58-44, picking up their first win of the season. And on Thursday, Why High, they took the trip down Route 50 to take on Cambridge in a Bayside North versus South matchup early on. Niall Thompson showing he's Ooh. going to his bag with the shimmy and free step back. Jumper looking like Kemba Walker there. Smooth. But Cambridge, they would have the lead after the first quarter, but why high? That they rebound. would rally. My man Jaden Baker, he's getting out in transition, finds Devontae, Devontae Dixie for the easy layup, and then Laquan Pettit. This is just silly right here, guys. Look at this. He says, That's, give me that much space. Jimmer range, knockdown Jimmer. three. He's throwing up the J.R. Smith yeah. three. Yeah, yeah Trey, you're thinking the same as me here. Yeah. And then a pretty no-look pass from Baker here in transition, showing off his playmaking skills, building off his strong freshman year. He Matt finds Lowe. Matt Lowe, who lays in the easy two. Why hide? They go on to win this one 82-62 to to start off the season 2-0. Back to Delaware rivalry night. Undefeated Laurel hosting Seaford on Thursday. Early on, Bulldogs trying to stop this guy, Ethan Lambert. Yeah, good luck. He's going to finish for two for the yeah. easy break. That's the, the Sussex Central bucket, transfer he, he is. That's exactly right. And on the other end, Eric Pilot getting things done down low for the Bulldogs. But I tell you what, Ethan Lambert had a great game. 36 mm -hmm. points, 15 for 15 from the free points. throw line. Yeah. Is he getting some kind of LeBron James calls or know. something? How did he get 15 free throws? Is he getting to the line, ben man? Simmons no idea. Throws. That's Pilot one more time. And then check him out a little bit later. Dejon Garrison with the baseline jumper. And then on I the other this. end, I Garrison making himself known down there as well. Ooh. He's going to swat the walking talk, bucket. Yeah, he's talking a little and, bit. Uh, talk a little trash to him. Why not? It's rivalry season. 62-51 Laurel wins. They're now 4-0 on the season. We tell them the expectations are going to be the same thing in the game, no matter if it's a thousand people in the stands or it's ten. So, you know, they're going to be in a lot of pressure moments, especially with the South being so tough. So we try to let them know that, you know, in these pressure moments, you got to come up big. Big players show up in big time games. We're going to head out to Dagsboro as Indian River. They hosted Woodbridge earlier this week, guys. We're going to fast forward, though, to the second half. That's where things got good. The story of the night, Blue Raiders, rather, getting out in transition to Sean Sampson says, give me that. Troy Haynes ends up with the ball and cruises in for the fast break layup. Woodbridge would lead by so seven after game. three, but that's when Jameer Felton decided mm. to take over. He knocks Goose down a three see that? and swags out the release. Did that. that cuts the deficit to just five with two minutes to go. And a few mm. plays later, Felton going to jump the passing lane, gain yeah. control, finish with the and one. Iyer now trailing by just three. Mm. Two seconds left, Unlucky. final possession. Yeah. Indians down How three, but guys, you saw it. Off. The pass doesn't even make it in bounds, and that's all she wrote. Wood Woodbridge hangs on in this one. They win it 51-48. And guys, last night, no snow in Dover. I made the trek out there. I had to wait in line to get in. It was a up. packed house on hand for the Battle of Crosstown rivals, Caesar, Rodney, and Dover, but from the start, Shaft Clark, this was his game in hey, transition. 15. A knockdown three, and that wouldn't be the last of them. Now, from the top of the key for his second three of the night, that puts the Riders up six to one. But the fast start, they will get Dover down. Sophomore, sophomore Elijah Allen jumps the passing lane and finishes strong at the rim. Count Good the lines. bucket plus Good the lines. foul. Dover the only down on a, his arm. A, a score. Then Javon Peace, we see him on the football field, but here with the nice pump fake dribble and pull up from the wing. The Senators not going away, and that at the end of the first Ooh. quarter, look at these bunnies from Davion Robinson. Beats the Not buzzer loose. with the lay in. The Riders with a five point lead after one. And then in the second, much of the same. Najee Watson, Watson <laughs> showing some international love with a little bit of a Euro step for yeah. the end one. And then Clark, Clark just showing off here a little shimmy Rain. step Ooh. back three. Wath in his Ooh. eye, his sixth. Let me repeat that sixth of the first half. Good that would great. be too much for the Senators to come back from as Cesar Rodney takes it 80 to 67, their second straight win <laughs> against their rival. Also last night, Polytech hosting Sussex Tech. Tech whoa, baby. Let's get it started. From the get-go, the Ravens getting out in transition. Patrick Dennis dishing off to Devon Reynolds. He's going to miss the initial attempt, but he gets the clean, uh, the clean up Offensive there. Offensive boards. Yeah. Garbage lay in. All right, look, just a few possessions later. Poly trying to get something going. It's a nice Phillip well, Lake the last with time a nice uh, a hook boring shot. move, I'll say, uh, to get it in. But uh, Sussex Tech. Doing their thing again. How about Reynolds one more time? Knocked down three from the corner. He finished with 14 points. Tech starts to capitalize. Ricky Kane almost dunked that. Looked like he, he missed wanted the one to before. dunk that. Tried to dunk tired. it. I think he wants to count it as Ricky a dunk. had a game high, 18 points. Then the Ravens again suffocating on defense. Jaquan Burton uh, almost dunks as well. That would be more than enough. Sussex Tech 
moving to two and zero on the year with an eighty one to fifty one win over Polytech. Our defense, man, it, our defense turns into an offense. Uh, big stops on defense, and we just get up, keep getting steals, put points on the board. Yeah, that's one of the things that we preach, I man. We work on that every night. Uh, we work on our defense because we can, we we always tell our kids that you know you can have a bad shooting night, but defensive, if you can get some stops and some easy transition passes, it helps to create offense for you. Hey. Too many times I just saw that Sussex Tech looked like they wanted to dunk. Yeah. But they kind of came on. So you said he missed the first Ricky one. Ricky Kane did miss his first dunk before Ricky, he kind of laid that Ricky one up Ricky Kane in. also got that first dunk in a game they yeah. had earlier this week, too. I'm telling Sussex Tech guys. Earlier like, last I, week. I don't, I don't care what they did last week. Let's do it from now on. So we can get the highlights in on DSI, right? Of yeah. course. Yes. Right. yes. I, can, I can't dunk. You saw my performance Yeah, you can't dunk. That's we, sure. We're not going to get to that just yet. Not yet. Stay tuned. Right. That's it for block number one. We're hitting a commercial break. Coming up, Parkside Girls Basketball. Being led by a freshman. Just a freshman. Wait till you hear about her monster opening week next in DSI. Hey, this is Darren Pilot from Laura Bulldogs Basketball, and you're watching the Marvel Sports Insider.